In this video, we're going to talk about velocity. What exactly is velocity? Now, before we can answer this question, we need to know what is speed. Speed tells you how fast something is going. So for instance, let's say a car is moving at 30 meters per second. That's the speed. Every second, it's covering a distance of 30 meters. So if we were to make a table with time and distance traveled, in zero seconds, it will cover a distance of zero meters. But in one second, it'll cover a distance of 30 meters. Two seconds, 60 meters. Three seconds, 90. So every second that passes, the distance is increasing by 30 meters. And that's the basic idea behind speed. Speed tells you how much the distance is changing every second. But what about velocity? Velocity is basically speed with direction. If a car is traveling 30 miles per hour, all you know about it is its speed. You don't know where it's going. You don't know its direction. But now let's say if the car is traveling at the same speed, 30 miles per hour, east. So now this description is velocity because I gave you the speed and the direction. If I say a car is traveling at 40 miles per hour with no direction, then this describes the speed of the car. So make sure you understand the difference. Speed tells you how fast the car is going. Velocity tells you how fast the car is going and also where it's going. So hopefully that gave you a good understanding of velocity. Now there are some equations that you want to know. The first one is how to calculate average speed and how to calculate average velocity. Average speed is basically distance divided by time. It's the distance that the car travels divided by the time that it's been traveling. Average velocity is a little different. Average velocity is the displacement of the vehicle divided by time. Displacement is distance with direction. So let's say if a car travels 20 meters. Is this distance or displacement? This would be the distance that the car traveled. Now let's say if a truck traveled 50 meters north. So here we have distance with direction. This describes the displacement of the vehicle. Now you need to know the difference between a scalar quantity and a vector quantity. So what do you think is the difference between these two? Speed is a scalar quantity, but velocity is a vector quantity. A scalar quantity is simply a number. It's something that has only magnitude. A vector quantity has both magnitude and direction. So distance is a scalar quantity. If a truck travels a distance of 80 meters, all we have is a number and no direction. Displacement is a vector quantity. If a school bus travels 150 meters west, we have both the magnitude, which is 150 meters, and we have the direction west. So make sure you understand that velocity is a vector quantity and speed is a scalar quantity. Now here's a question for you. Can speed be negative? And what about velocity? Can velocity be a negative value? Speed can only be positive. Velocity can be positive or negative. You need to know that speed is the absolute value of velocity. So make sure you understand that. Let me just rewrite that. So velocity can be positive or negative, but speed 
is always positive. Now let's work on some practice problems. Feel free to pause the video. You can try this if you want to. A car travels 40 meters east and then 90 meters west in 20 seconds. Calculate the average speed of the vehicle. So let's draw a picture. So let's say the car starts here and it travels 40 meters east. So let's call this point A and then point B. Now from point B, it travels 90 meters west. Let's say to point C. What is the average speed of the vehicle? Now, if you recall, average speed is the distance traveled divided by the time. So what is the total distance that the car traveled? It went 40 meters to the right and then 90 meters to the left. So it's going to be 40 plus 90, which is 130 meters. Now, how much time did it take for the car to go from A to B to C? Well, based on the problem, it took a total of 20 seconds. So what is 130 divided by 20? Well, we can cancel the zero, and so it becomes 13 divided by 2, which is 6.5 meters per second. And this is the answer. Now, what about part B? What is the average velocity? Average velocity, as we said before, is equal to the displacement of the vehicle divided by the total time that it's been traveling. So what is the displacement of the car? Now, distance is always positive. However, displacement can be positive or negative. In the first part of the trip, the car was traveling 40 meters east. So the displacement for that portion of the trip, is it positive or negative? East is towards the positive x-axis. So this is going to be positive 40. During the second half of the trip, the car traveled 90 meters west. That is towards the negative x-axis, so that's negative 90. If you add 40 and negative 90, you're going to get negative 50. And it makes sense. This is the initial position of the car, and this is the final position. So the net change going from A to C is that the car traveled 50 meters west. If you look at its initial position and its final position. In fact, that's really what displacement is. It's the difference between the final position of the car and the initial position of the car. So let's say if we had a number line. And at point A, that's the origin. Point B would be 40 meters on the number line. And point C would be negative 50. So we traveled 40 meters east from A to B, and then 90 meters west from B to C. And so we started at position 0, we ended at negative 50, so the change in position is negative 50. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's the displacement of this particular car. It's negative 50 meters because it went west. Now we're going to divide this by the time. And so that's 20 seconds. So we can cancel the 0. Half of 5 is 2.5. So the average velocity is negative 2.5. Now, earlier in this video, we said that speed is the absolute value of velocity. And if that's true, how is it that the average velocity is negative 2.5? based on the example that we did previously, and the average speed, positive 6.5. How is that possible? Now, this equation doesn't apply for average speed and average velocity. Rather, it applies for instantaneous 
speed, and instantaneous velocity. The average velocity and the average speed, they're calculated over a long time interval, whereas the instantaneous speed and velocity is calculated over a very, very, very short time period. And so this equation is true for instantaneous speed and instantaneous velocity. I just want to clarify that point. But we can talk about this topic in another video. And that's basically it for this video. If you want more problems on velocity and even the next topic, acceleration, check out the links in the description section of this video and you can access those other problems. So if you're going to subscribe, don't forget to click the notification bell if you wish to receive updates on any new videos I'm going to post in the future. Thanks again for watching.